development in which he directed parties in the Mumia's sugar ownership tussle to withdraw their cases, failure to which they will be deported, jailed or take what the president described as a journey to heaven as a threat to the rule of law and asked him to withdraw the remarks and apologize. Here are the full details of this report. Mesema hawa watu mambo yao ni tatu. Sindio? Either wahame Kenya ama waende jela ama waende mbinguni. The demand that we want to make on the president is to not only withdraw and apologize for those very very unfortunate remarks but also to allow the due process of law to take its course to its logical conclusion. We implore on religious leaders and all Kenyans of goodwill to come out and condemn the attempts to return our country to the dark ages and to depart from the rule of, rule of law. What we are concerned about is that he has done an absolute 360 turn. He is no longer keen to seek accountability, but on the other hand, he is more than willing and ready to use the same, same methods to achieve whatever aims that they have. It starts with one person before it becomes a flood. The Law Society of Kenya is apprehensive that advocates will be the next target. In an attempt to intimidate those who are representing the various parties in court disputes over Mumia's company, the Law Society is also aware of the plans to cripple its operations through unwarranted tax audit and investigations by the Kenya Revenue Authority. I want to ask the President and the Deputy to know that to whom more is given, more is required of them. They must respect the constitution, the rule of law, and they must govern justly. It is important that the President of the Republic of Kenya must apologize to the Kenyans and all businessmen who are doing their businesses. Uh, Mumias and uh, the President's sentiments, uh, what exactly are the legal battles over billions owed to creditors? Now, these are the full details. Now, uh, claimed uh, claims filed by creditors against the insolvent Mumia Sugar Company are at a center of a storm that has roped in, among others, President William Ruto. Now, a review of court documents reveals an intricate web of petitioners, money in billions of shillings, and shadows of powerful opposing forces resolving around rival business interests. Now, the affidavit sworn by former Treasury Principal uh, uh, Secretary Dr. Julius Amonzi Amwea in 2022 uh, chronicles, uh, chronicles the company's changing fortunes from its first incorporation in June 1977 and the privatization in 2001, with the government uh, through uh, the exchequer uh, retaining 20% ownership of seeding 75.43% uh, uh, to individuals, while institutions got 4.57% ownership of the then lucrative company. Now things, however, started going wrong for the sugar mill in the financial year 2012-2013 when it started recording net losses before collapsing by the end of 2018, uh, having increased uh, incurred losses amounting to Kenyan shillings 39.44 billion. Now, as, as of as of June 2018, the company's borrowings, principal, loans and interests from in and out of government stood at 12.59 billion. Now, in the same affidavit, the former PS said that back then, Momias owed a propaco, Kenyan shillings, 1.9 billion, secured using the electricity generation plant. Now, the court, uh, the court document also showed that the Miller owed EcoBank uh, Kenya shillings 2.8 billion, while the government, through the Kenya Sugar Board Commodity Fund and the National Treasury, was owed a collective of 4.81 billion, which was unsecured with no loan agreement executed.
Now loans procured from KCB, CBA, Barclays and Stanbic Bank were secured with Mumia's prime agriculture land. Now Mumia's went into a court-ordered insolvency in 2019, but all creditors agreed to give the administration a chance before resorting to liquidation to recover their monies. Now the first administrator, Ponapipali Vankata Raman Rao, is accused by one creditor advocate Jacqueline Kimeto who is owed close to shillings 77 million by the sugar company or failing to meet the creditors as agreed. Uh, he was removed in April last year for amongst other things gross incompetence and corruption. In the same year another administrator Kareta Marima was appointed but was frustrated from assuming the duties that included meeting creditors and attacking proof of debt and filing a report with the insolvency court. Akimeto is a in a sworn affidavit claims that the process of getting the debts cleared by the company have been repeatedly frustrated. Now, Akimeto also claims that KCB Bank and the first administrator Rao had not only acted as the only creditors owed money by the sinking company, but have also engaged in tactics to abuse the legal process by misleading the court into issuing all manner of overlapping rules by pleading in consistent positions and tinkering with the administration of justice through corruption of court processes. She also states that Mumias was improperly handed over to Sarai Group with the review of grabbing 15,000 hectares of land known as the nucleus. She further states that the company's assets have been left exposed to grabbing due to the absence of an administrator. In her affidavit, Kimeto accused the Sarai Group of systematically stripping uh, assets from the company, the letters being a wheel loader that was cutted away from Mumia Sugar and is currently being used at Sarai's premises to load timber logs. Uh, she claims that law enforcement officers have failed to act so much reports on some reports uh, despite the incidents being brought to their attention. Other reports have also been made to the police in Mumias of property that has been stolen, including computers, water system pipes from residential houses and industrial gas cylinders. She also accused Sarai of moving machinery, mortar and other equipment from Mumias and, co uh, and can cannibalizing the sugar company at the expense of those who are owed the money. While the court tussles continue, the government with its 20% stake in the company is once again promising to inject life into the troubled mill by writing off debts and acquiring new machines. This won't be the first time the government under different administrations has attempted to bail out Mumias, which is now under the management of Ugandan-based Sarai Group. Uh, the company's owner, Tycoon Sajbit Singh Rai, is entangled in a legal tussle with his billionaire brother, Ajahn Swan Rai, uh, who owns West Kenya Sugar over the 20 years lease granted to Sarai and the manner in which Mumias Sugar was handed to him. Now that is exactly what is bedeviling the um, then famous sugar producer Mumias Sugar. And away from uh, away from uh, Mumias uh, to other news that uh, uh, that uh, are making headlines in the country. President Ruto says all is set for the new time. Now President William Ruto used his tour of Western Kenya to outline strides his administration has made to streamline the education sector, citing changes that have been made to the competency-based curriculum. The president further stated that in line with his campaign promise to hire more teachers to ensure quality, uh, the education ministry had hired 55,000 teachers and facilitated the promotion of others. Here are the full details where the president is in Western Kenya. Niliwaeleza kabla ya uchaguzi ya kwamba hii CBC tutaikalia mpaka tuinyoroshe. Sasa hiyo CBC tumeinyorosha, tumeipanga vizuri, tumeondoa zile changamoto zote zilikuwa kule ndani na sasa watoto wetu watakuwa na taratibu ya kusoma ambayo haina matatizo. Mwaka huu tumeajiri walimu 1555 wapya watakao tusaidia kufundisha watoto wetu. The largest, the largest employment of teachers in Kenyan history. 
na ni kwa sababu tunataka elimu ituletee usawa nilisema hao walimu ni watu wazuri promotion ya walimu haijafanyika miaka kumi na tatu nimewapatia pesa shilingi bilioni moja kuhakikisha kwamba walimu karibu 1030 wamepata promotion zamani walimu walikuwa wanakuwa employed 5000 per year huu kwa mwaka mmoja ameajiri walimu 55000 Alafu jana amepea 51000 promotion. Alafu jana pia simulisikia walimu wakinunika o oh, pesa yetu imeenda. Mlisikia? Jana wamechapwa kitu 710%. Kule Bungoma jana walimu sihi atengeneze sangalo iwe polytechnic ya kitaifa. Pia watu wakauliza mambo mengi. Mheshimiwa rais sasa mimi sifichi siri kwa sababu umeamua uamuzi umetoka. Mimi nataka niambie watu wa sehemu hii president kupitia kwa kikao chake sasa sangalo ni polytechnic ya kitaifa ambayo imeingia. Leo katika baraza la mawaziri ambayo tumetoka saa hizi tumekubaliana ya kwamba tutatoa ardhi ya serikali kuzalisha mbegu ya mahindi zaidi kwa sababu wakulima wetu wamejitokeza kulima na sisi kama serikali tutawashika mkono yeye ndiyo alikuwa waziri wa kwanza wa kurikacha kupeana mbolea kwa watu bila malipo hapa bunyore so nasema pongezi tumekubaliana pia ya kwamba tutatoa pesa bilioni ine ya kuhakikisha kwamba bei ya chakula ya mkulima isirudi chini kuliko kiasi fulani ndio to balance interest ya consumers na interest ya producers ili tuhakikisha kwamba we manage the market infrastructure for the benefit of consumers and producers tumekubaliana jameni hiyo yes. ndio mpango tuko naye na tunataka tuwashirikishe na tunataka tufanye kazi hiyo kwa pamoja ako vihiga kesha ako kakamega kuhakikisha western region hayaachwi nyuma kwa maendeleo Mambo ya barabara, mambo ya maji, mambo ya elimu, mambo ya kila kitu. Ile tu tunawaomba wananchi ni tusimame pamoja kama kitu kimoja. Kwa heshima ya Joe Kadenge tumeingia pale Gisambai Primary School. Huko ndiyo Joe Kadenge alisomea. Huko ndiyo mazishi ya Joe Kadenge ilifanyika na tunaanzisha pale Academy ya Sports ya kwanza katika hiyo shule. Na tumeamua kuita Joe Kadenge Memorial Academy. We from uh, the president in Western Kenya to other stories here that are making headlines in the country. Now senators have recommended extending talks to the public. The National Dialogue Committee is set to sign its framework agreement on Wednesday after the Senate approved the establishment of a 10-member National Dialogue Committee and another eight member technical team to support it the ndc which includes leaders from both kenya kwanza coalition and azimula umoja has 60 days to hold talks and submit a report to parliament here are pictures from the senate as of that opinion say i, I. that the national daily committee shall formulate and adopt a framework agreement to guide the bipartisan talks that the National Dialogue Committee shall report to the leadership of Kenya Kwanza and as mere coalitions within 60 days and thereafter submit its report to Parliament. The issues are framed. The agenda we have now is not that of uh, a Kenya Kwanza or Azimio. We've also uh, received uh, the consolidated issues uh, as proposed by the technical teams they have clustered them in various uh, uh, titles. Will, as many as of that opinion say aye. aye. Will as many as of the contrary opinion say nay. The eyes have it. Uh, now to wild coin, wild coin probe uh, details of 350,000 Kenyan uh, Kenyans in my in wild coin database now now the national assembly ad hoc committee inquiring into the wild coin project has been told that uh, the data collected from Kenyans is stored in servers based in Amazon in the United States uh, here are the full details 
So on their side was WorldCoin or their agencies providing a robust consent form or terms and conditions to which Kenyans agreed to whatever it is that they were going to use the data with. As they have told us they don't investigate, they don't uh, collect intelligence and the rest. This committee is made up of the PS in the area. This committee is made up of the DCI, the NS, uh, NIS. So what else are we going to ask the DCI which they cannot tell us? So, Chair, unless they tell us they're not prepared... It's already an investigation which is going on. Are you telling us that the, the DCI, the NIS, and you people, you have not assisted with this equipment? They are not being conspicuated even in the process of investigation. Uh, <coughs> data protection in this country, you are not allowed to export uh, that data to an external storage uh, device. We've already seen that the, uh, the data was put to Amazon. We don't know what was put there. How was it put there? How can we access it? And that and I, I, combine, I combine with the question of can uh, the government be able to... And away from a wild coin and now to another story here cabinet approves a scrapping nhif to be replaced by three new funds now the cabinet has repealed the national health insurance fund and replaced it with three separate funds that is the primary health care fund social health insurance fund and the emergency chronic and critical illness fund in its bid to accelerate universal health coverage now, State House spokesperson Hussein Mohammed explained that the three funds result from the re uh, re reorganization of the shillings of 50, 550 billion that, that constitutes the total health expenditure. Uh, he, however, noted that the primary care fund will be funded by the exchequer. At the same time, the cabinet resolved to set ma uh, to set maize prices uh, to cushion the farmers from South Rift, Nyanza, Central, Eastern, and Coast regions, farmers from suffering losses from the expected bumper harvest in their regions. Now, a dispatch from the inaugural cabinet meeting outside Nairobi at the Kakamega State Lodge says an agreement has been made to set a fair price for the producer. Additionally, the government will cushion farmers from post-harvest losses by providing them with mobile mobile dryers uh, as it works on as it works on finding a market for their producers. And on that note, we come to the end of the news that are making headlines in the country. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're coming back with what is making headlines in the dailies. Keep it signs. My name is Luke Kizito Ojiambo Muleka. I am the founder and managing director of uh, Science Media Kenya Limited. Science Media has uh, two products. Uh, one is a sign language television station, Science TV, and a sign language interpreter's mobile application, Assistol. For the first time, uh, deaf people have choice for the first time deaf people are ex going to experience real inclusion because now being this marginal i mean the the the, the, the minority population are in the major population they have been it was easy for them to be left out in the in in, in the society but now with assist all you find that now a deaf person has a choice to when they can go uh, to a meeting, when they can go for that job interview, a deaf person now has a choice on when to go to hospital simply because they can access these interpretation services now on their fingertips. We are going to see a lot of inclusion of deaf people in the community, in the society, simply because of uh, the ability for them now to communicate seamlessly using this mobile application.
as a professional or a corporate entity, download the app from the Google Play Store or App Store and proceed to register as a corporate entity from the drop-down menu. Edit your profile and add your phone number onto the profile. You can then load money into your wallet using an M-Pesa push notification or via Visa debit card details. You are now ready for professional interpretation services. Download the app from the Google Play Store or App Store today. Coastal Region is watching Science TV.